Well, hi there. This amazing creature, yeah, the one sitting in my lap, is a snapping turtle. Recently, we had this video go viral on Instagram. Many people in the comments in that video seem to be under the impression that Nipper, the turtle in that video, is just trying to get Sawyer's face. And as bad as that would be, it would be much less horrible than if Thunder here got a hold of my face. And not because I don't care as much about Sawyer's face as my own, but because this turtle is so much larger than Nipper, though Nipper is getting big. But the truth is, as I explained last year in this video, that all four snapping turtles with which I have interacted a great deal, they've all become, sooner or later, delightful animals that I can scratch on the head and under the chin, and apparently that can just sit on my lap. The real question is why? This is not normal behavior for a snapping turtle. So why does every single snapping turtle with which I interact turn into a delightful lap turtle? My leading hypothesis is that it has something to do with the way that I handle them. Snapping turtles have the species name Calidra serpentina, which means turtle snake because of their long serpent-like necks, which makes it somewhat difficult to grab one safely. They can reach back way over their shell. And snapping turtle is no misnomer. They snap. Their bottom shell, called the plastron, is very small. This allows them much greater limb flexibility than is possible for most turtles, enabling them to walk with their limbs under their body, like a dinosaur, and unlike most other turtles, which makes it easier to move their heavy bodies on land. It also makes it easier to climb, and they are great climbers. Thunder here was attempting to climb into this couch over and over before we started filming. But it makes it so that they can't pull themselves totally into their shells for protection. So they bite instead. Their snap is fast, faster than a human reaction time. And shockingly, they have a significantly stronger bite force than do their larger cousins, the alligator snapping turtles at least based on the measurements we've actually been able to take with real turtles. So they are faster, with a greater strike range, and potentially a harder bite. It's difficult to think of a worse turtle to hold in your lap, but here we are. The reality is that this is a difficult turtle to hold, period. And not just because they're heavy. To handle them safely, many people handle them by the tail or back legs. These ways can, however, injure or even kill the turtle especially picking them up by the tail. Their spine runs through their tail, and they're very heavy. Picking them up by the tail can sever their spinal cord. Not good. The safer way to handle them for you and for the turtle is by the back half of the shell, being careful to hold them far enough back that they can't reach you. But being picked up literally by the rib cage it never looked comfortable to me. And given how Bubba Chunk responded the only time he was lifted this way in my presence, it wasn't. These are intelligent turtles, very intelligent. This is an active predator. Such a lifestyle overwhelmingly favors higher intelligence, and especially for a turtle, they have it. Nipper stopped hating me about a year before he stopped hating everyone else. This means they can recognize individual humans. And they are curious animals. Even in the wild, they tend to stay fairly close to people in the water just to watch them. And yet bites almost never occur in the water. So they're not there to hunt you, they just want to know about you. Like I said, I've heard of very few cases of people being bitten by snapping turtles in the water. In the water, they're very fast, and when escape is an option for them, they seem to just want to see what we're all about. But of the four snapping turtles with which I've interacted regularly, I have never handled any of them this way. I have handled all of them by supporting their weight from below, holding them like a sandwich while they're small, and like this as adults. I wasn't even sure that this was a safe way to hold one the first time that I tried it. I'd never seen a snapping turtle reach under its body, but it doesn't mean they can't. And given that I'd never had a turtle even attempt to bite me while being held in this manner, I still don't know for sure. Bubba came to us with the reputation for being a particularly aggressive turtle. And yet in all the years that he lived here, he never tried to bite me or anyone else that worked here. It wasn't until he was handled in the more common by the shell way that I learned why he had that reputation. But I've never dared to jeopardize my relationship with my turtles to find out if this is really making such a big difference. In fact, until recently, I had never lifted a snapping turtle using the by the shell method in my entire life. But I think that we've been completely wrong about snapping turtles. If this is true, I want to share it with the world. But being a scientist, I need data. Obviously, my personal experience with my four turtles, plus one more that I got to handle once, illustrated that turtles don't bite when I handle them this way. 
But it could just be me. Maybe they just like me and the other people here at Clint's Reptile Room. What happens if I handle them differently? How much does the handling method impact behavior? Well, I just went to Pennsylvania to do a full study to find out. And I want to publish my findings right here on YouTube for you guys to see today. So let's head over to the studio and I will walk you through what I did, show you the results, and discuss what it means for the future. So let me start off by telling you what I wanted to do. I wanted to get my hands on as many larger, unsocialized common snapping turtles as possible. I would randomly assign each turtle to one of two treatments. One where I lift it from below and hold it for 30 seconds, measuring signs of aggression, such as open mouth and bite attempts before putting it down. I would then let it sit for approximately 15 minutes and then lift it from the sides and hold it for 30 seconds, measuring the same signs of aggression as before. And the other where I lift it from the sides first and then from below with the same 15 minute break in between and measures of aggression. We would also record variables such as size, sex, and whether it was housed indoors or outdoors. And we would control for these variables as well as which method of handling occurred first when we ran a multivariate statistical analysis to determine if there is a significant difference in terms of aggression depending on the method of handling. To do this study, I went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to meet my friend Garrett Hartle of Reach Out Reptiles because he has a friend who breeds common snapping turtles and has some number of large unsocialized turtles that we could utilize for the study. Now I will tell you that things didn't go exactly to plan, but don't worry, I have some exciting news that I will share with you in the end. And we certainly got some really, really interesting results. But due to some unexpected medical news, we ended up having much less time to run this study than originally expected. As a result, we only had access to five turtles plus one more unsocialized turtle that we have here at Clint's Reptile Room that we will examine here after we discuss these five. So after these five, I can still be called Clinty Ten Fingers, but this video could still end with an amputation, so stay tuned. Before going to Pittsburgh, I did a power analysis and estimated that I would need at least 20 turtles to perform this statistical analysis that I had in mind. And again, I have some plans for the future that I will share in a minute, but let's take a look at our results first. Because in some ways, they very much speak for themselves. Okay, so this is Turtle A. All turtles in the study were assigned a letter to identify them. Turtle A is a female who is kept indoors. She has a carapace length of 23 centimeters. She is in the below treatment, so she was handled from below first and from the sides 15 minutes later. In all cases, I held the turtles and counted to 37 to ensure that we had at least 30 seconds of handling. But data were only collected for the first 30 seconds of handling. We will now observe both handling sessions. Again, these attempts were conducted 15 minutes apart. For the sake of time, the footage in many cases will be sped up along with the clock. When handled from below, Turtle A displayed an open mouth, but no snap attempts. It also closed the mouth within the first 15 seconds of handling. When handled from the sides, it displayed no signs of aggression. This is Turtle B. Turtle B is a male kept indoors with a carapace length of 32 centimeters. He is in the sides treatment, so he was handled from the sides first and from below 15 minutes later. Turtle B showed no signs of aggression when handled from the sides or below. This is Turtle C. Turtle C is male, kept indoors with a carapace length of 35 centimeters. He is in the below treatment, so he was handled from below first.
Turtle C showed no signs of aggression when handled from below or the sides. This is Turtle D. Turtle D is female, kept outdoors with a carapace length of 32 centimeters. She is in the side treatment, so she was handled from the sides first. Turtle D showed multiple signs of aggression when being handled from the sides. She displayed an open mouth multiple times and beyond the first 15 seconds of handling. She also attempted to bite three different times while being handled from the sides. She showed no signs of aggression while being handled from below. This is Turtle E. Turtle E is female, kept outdoors with a carapace length of 36 centimeters. She is in the sides treatment, so she was handled from the sides first. Turtle E showed no signs of aggression while being handled from the sides or below. This is Turtle F. Turtle F is a turtle that was recently brought to us here at Clinch Reptile Room by Animal Control. Snapping turtles are not native here in Utah, so when they're found in the wild, they need to be removed from the wild. If we couldn't take her, she was going to need to be euthanized and so I'm grateful that they reached out to us about her. When they first brought her to us, she showed considerable signs of aggression when handled by the police officer. We have deliberately minimized our interactions with her so that she could be included in this experiment. Turtle F is female, kept until recently in the wild, currently indoors. We will measure her after handling as we did with all prior turtles. She is in the below treatment, so she will be handled from below first. Turtle F showed no signs of aggression while being handled from the sides or below, and her carapace length is 29 centimeters long. Okay, so these are our data. Obviously, with a sample size of six, we are not going to perform any sort of a statistical analysis. These are rather anecdotal data, but they are very interesting. In four of six cases, no aggression was observed during either handling session. In both cases where aggression was observed, it was observed exclusively on the first hold. Turtle A showed an open mouth during its first hold, which closed before the halfway point of the hold. This was when being held from below. It showed no signs of aggression on the second hold when held from the sides. Turtle D showed an open mouth throughout the first hold when being held from the sides and snapped multiple times throughout the 30 seconds of handling. This was the only case of snapping while being handled for any turtle, though she did take a shot at me while I was attempting to measure her as well. She's a grumpy girl. That said, she showed no signs of aggression whatsoever on the second hold when held from below. So while aggression was seen in both treatments on the first hold, the degree of aggression observed in the sides treatment was much more severe than that observed in the below treatment. But that could be simply because Turtle D is a much more aggressive turtle than Turtle A. So the question is, for this aggressive individual, is the difference in response simply due to the order of handling, or does the method of handling matter? To assess this question, immediately following the second handling session, where she was handled from below without showing any aggression, we handled her again, but from the sides, and then following that, one more time from below. And this is what that looked like. So right after being handled from below and measured, when handled from the sides, she displayed an open mouth and snapping once again. And then when moved back to the below handle, she showed no signs of aggression. 
So this is one documented example of a common snapping turtle showing consistently higher levels of aggression when handled from the sides than below in a controlled setting. Admittedly, not as strong a form of evidence as I would like to have, but certainly in support of our hypothesis that snapping turtles show less aggression when handled from below than from the sides of the shell. A hypothesis which might explain why not some, but every snapping turtle here at Clint's Reptile Room, and indeed with which I have interacted regularly in my entire life, has turned out like this. But there are a couple of things that I would change about this experiment if I could. First, I'd want more turtles. Considerably more turtles. Ideally, pretty much as many turtles as possible. And second, I would prefer for them to be wild. We didn't use wild turtles in this experiment because the only people we knew that could collect the number of turtles that we would need would likely kill those turtles following the experiment. I would rather not do the experiment than have that happen, so I decided to use these unsocialized but captive turtles instead. However, while performing this experiment, Garrett and I learned of some expert turtle catchers who insist on the safe release of all turtles that they catch. In other words, my favorite kind of people. And thanks to the support of our patrons on Patreon, it is highly likely that we will be able to work with them to perform this experiment in exactly the method that would be ideal. And I already have ideas for follow-up experiments of a grander scale than that. So really exciting things are coming. But what do you think of our results so far? As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. I just want to re-emphasize that this entire experiment wouldn't have been possible without the support of these people. And we want to do a lot more real in the field research like this, especially for important questions like this one. If you'd like to see us be able to do more of this kind of research in the future, please consider either supporting us on Patreon or joining us as YouTube members. We now offer both options and both help us. So please consider checking them out. Oh, you didn't see this, Jason, but he slapped the turtle. <laughs> Well, and and right right now, if I were public, right on the butt, right on the butt. If I